Hi, my name is Charlotte Lee, and I'm an artist manager and the associate director of orchestral booking at IMG Artists. An artist manager at IMG basically oversees the career of solo artists, and we have a roster of a couple hundred instrumentalists and different artists that we work with, attractions and dance companies and so forth. And basically, we advise them on where they should be in their careers, where they should go, how they can um, portray a certain image that they might want to go for, and we arrange concert tours for them, negotiate record deals, and basically oversee the entire um, business aspect of their careers, allowing them to focus on performance. Wow, the biggest problems with artist management. I would say that there are um, a lot of talented people out there, and there's a lot of competition. And for me, I work particularly with young artists, and it's just really tough out there. I mean, it's tough in the world we work in on the business side to get gigs for artists, but it's extremely tough for them too. I mean, they really have to have something unique about themselves that sets them apart from any other artist because there are so many talented people out there. So I would say that's story. toughest. Yes, they have to have a story. They have to have a platform. Some of them have strong convictions about particular aspects of music or how they want to deliver something or they just have to have an amazingly unique and deep w interpretation of music and and the way to deliver that. I started playing violin when I was four years old and then I picked up piano when I was in fourth grade and uh, concentrated mostly in violin and I went to school at University of Texas at Austin where I double majored in violin performance in liberal arts just so I can get a balance because I wasn't sure yet whether I wanted to pursue performance. So out of college I had thought that I would go to law school but I wasn't really feeling convicted that that was my life calling so I had the opportunity through a foundation, it no longer exists anymore but it was called the Joni Abbott Music Foundation and started in Texas and that I basically got the opportunity to do a couple internships in New York, which they arranged for me and paid, paid a stipend for me to live here. And one was at a law firm um, working for artists called Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts, and another one was Polygram Classics and Jazz, which is now Universal Classics and Jazz record company, which oversees, um, well, the division I was in oversaw the Deutsche Grammophon London Decca and Phillips labels and that was where I realized wow forget about law this is what I've been made for the music business because I had all along had a hesitation about going into performance because I felt like while I had some talent and I could probably end up as an orchestra musician in a major orchestra whether I wanted to do that was was something that I hesitated about I just felt like you know I I love people and I love music, but I don't know if I love music enough to be in a practice room all by myself for six hours a day and to com be competing to keep my chair until I'm finally tenured at the age of 50. So being um, in the environment as an intern at a record company for classical musicians was was great and eye-opening for me and I realized this is where I want to be and um, rather than continuing to work with product I thought well I'd love to work one and you know one and one and on the front line with musicians and that's when someone told me about the artist management side of the industry and I thought gosh you know I wish that in high school or at least college they told you about all these great things that you could do with your life besides being a doctor lawyer or engineer or a performing musician in that case. So it was perfect for me and uh, shortly after my internship ended I uh, got an opportunity to come to IMG. They have to constantly be growing and I think the first thing to the first and most important thing for an artist to do is to always be modest so that there's always room for improvement because if one thinks that they have it all, then 
Um, they won't study as much, they won't learn as much new repertoire, and they won't challenge themselves, and that shows um, because they'll be just playing the same repertoire and won't have anything new to offer audiences. So I would say that's the most important thing. I mean, even the most mature and established artists who are 60 years old still think that they're not masters of their craft, so they continue to challenge themselves and that comes through to the audience. Launching the career of a young artist takes a lot of um, patience and perseverance because basically you're starting from ground zero. No one's heard of them, but um, in an ideal case, when we would have signed them, probably a few people have heard of them because we usually keep our ears really close to the ground and if there's buzz about an artist, we'll sign them. Um, but basically, you just have to believe fully in that artist, otherwise we would have never signed them in the first place, and you just talk them up. So everyone you know in the industry, you just talk them up, and sometimes um, besides sending the usual press materials out and recordings, which are effective to a point, sometimes we try to set up auditions with key people in the industry, such as conductors who make a lot of the decisions decisions in programming, uh, uh, programming concerts for the orchestral world, or we set up auditions with uh, key presenters or orchestra managers, and most of those guys basically cover the whole spectrum of who makes decisions in the music industry and the concert promotion side. And if your artist is truly talented, then they'll blow them away in an audition, and then immediately after you'll get a booking. So that helps to really get the momentum going and then once you have people who have heard of them and talk them up they just start talking to everybody else and it's a small industry and world so word travels fast so it catches on and then soon you have you know a dozen concerts a year and then a couple of years later you might have you know 30 concerts and then it just keeps going from there but the key is really investing yourself in talent that's truly truly phenomenal. Otherwise, the momentum will really have a hard time getting started. As I said before, we try to keep our ears close to the ground, and um, all the people that we talk to in the industry, we're all very close. Um, there's a close network, so if there's an orchestra manager who just happened to present a particular artist that doesn't have management, they may call us because we work closely with them and they'll say, hey, heads up, we just presented the most amazing 17-year-old violinist and you really need to come hear them. And so a lot of it is through network connections. Um, every day we get solicitations from musicians and while we appreciate it, the number um, of mail that we get is overwhelming and most of the time um, I hate to say this but most of the time the solicitations are the ones that we don't usually sign it's usually the ones that we're going after them and they're just so great that you know they probably aren't even soliciting they're just busy playing and having buzz be said about them throughout the industry so that's usually the latter case is how we would find an artist Artists uh, handling themselves in an audition can be similar to how they handle themselves in a performance or competition atmosphere. Um, they just need to be as natural as possible and some say that it's helpful not to have nerves, but I think that, I think that the natural adrenaline helps to um, just increase the quality of the performance, especially when you know, you're playing for a live audience or live people. But I think that it comes with time, but on the other hand, I think that most of our artists feel quite comfortable on stage or in an audition, otherwise they wouldn't want to make a career out of it. So in a sense, some of it has to be quite natural to them. If someone wants to pursue a solo career and they've gone the traditional route of going to school and haven't played any concerts, I would say that it would be extremely difficult um, because in our industry we often look at young people. So these artists can start as early as 
nine or ten years old and they're already performing concerts some of them are homeschooled or they might go to a professional children's school or conservatory at a very young age so they've already gained the experience and by the time they're 18 years old at least in the instrumental world a lot of them have already made some sort of a name for themselves where they're ready to go but on the other hand there are some that are against the route of being exposed to the concert stage so early and their parents or teachers might want them to study um, which is which is great and something that we encourage too and I would say that if they have no experience in the concert stage and people may not know about them I would say probably enter a competition for instance if you're a pianist and you want to enter a competition like the Van Cliburn competition or the Chopin competition which just took place in Poland that's a great way of getting in and getting noticed so if you win one of those competitions it's not a guarantee that you'll have a career but it's a guarantee that you'll have five minutes of fame and whether you can turn that five minutes into a lifetime is is up to the artist I would say on the whole musicians are really different from each other there are some that are really well-rounded um, very uh, intellectual and um, have a desire to know about all sorts of different things whether it's culture or society or current events or philosophy um, but there are some other artists who have really no desire to have a well-rounded education and that's their prerogative and they just throw themselves into music some of them might not even be as interested in symphonic music or opera if they're say a pianist and they might just make themselves um, spend all their time on concentrating on piano repertoire and pianists and there's nothing wrong with that um, it's it's really each artist's decision but i would say we at our agency, we have a whole spectrum of artists who go from well-rounded to completely focused on their area. For someone who wants to go into the music business, I would say they have to be passionate about classical music. They have to be knowledgeable about it. It helps to major in it. I don't think it's necessary to um, focus, say, on music business per se, though that's very helpful. I actually think that in this side of the business, um, having a good knowledge of repertoire and artists is really important, especially in artist management and orchestra management, since you're doing so much programming and talking about different symphonies and concertos. And it's good to have an education in, in say, performance or just musicology. But overall, I would say a music background and education is great. Um, someone who loves to work with people is helpful since we interact with people and artists um, all the time. And, uh, and I would say the last thing would be for practical experience to get your foot in the door. I'm a big supporter of internships. I, I advocate that all the way. I mean, that's how I got into the industry. Um, it's pretty impossible to just step in and be an agent when you have no experience. So most of the time, you, one would start from the bottom as an assistant or, or doing something like that. And a great way to get your foot in the door is to work for free. And even though it'll be just temporarily not getting a paycheck, um, an internship is a great way to not only gain experience and contacts, but to try it out and see if you like it. And if you do, then the more people you're exposed to in the internship, the more opportunities you have to work in the business. Uh, it takes a lot to work with artists because they're, they're different people in, um, in a lot of ways. They're um, very focused sometimes on, on particular things like music and um, they may not necessarily think about things that someone who's not an artist thinks about which may be you know the day that it is you know someone who works a regular job at a computer definitely knows the day of the week <laughs> but some of our artists don't necessarily think about what day it is or they might not show up at the airport because they didn't realize that today was yesterday. <laughs> so um, some of it can be amusing. So I, I think that it does take patience and understanding, and it takes um, sometimes a sense of humor to get through it. But um, 
on the whole, I think it's very helpful to have a music background when you work in the business so that you can understand just how engrossed an artist can get in their work and how they can sometimes neglect the things that we take for granted that are trivial but necessary. Um, so I would say that um, it takes patience and understanding, but sometimes it also takes um, an ability to, I guess, serve as a psychologist or um, also a diplomat because sometimes an artist might not necessarily want to do something which is understandable from an artist's perspective but as an agent since you're the middleman you have to make two people happy one is the artist and one is the concert promoter or sometimes the record company or publicist whoever it is on, on that side um, might have an agenda which doesn't align with the artists and sometimes um, as an agent you just have to try to diplomatically find a compromise for both parties so that everybody's happy in the end. So it takes a little bit of massaging, that's why I said psychologist, because you have to get behind their thinking and assure them that you understand their concerns, but somehow bring to light the reason that this person may want want a different answer out of the artist. So, so diplomacy, psychology, patience, understanding, and just um, a sense of a sense of perspective in the whole thing is all necessary, I think. I would say that you have to follow what you love to do because you spend 50 years of your life working and to do it, spending time doing something that you don't feel passionate about is a waste of 50 years. So I would say that if you have a passion for the arts, go for it. But don't necessarily box yourself in to think that, well, if I love painting, I have to be a painter. I mean, there are so many options out there, being a curator, being you know, a buyer, being a designer, being an agent. So um, just know that there are so many things that involve the arts that you can spend your life doing um, as a career. So the most important thing is to do what you love. And I think that whether it's, um, whether it's working with people who do that, whether it's performance, um, it can be whatever, as long as you're doing what you love. So that would be my advice.